hi everyone hi family welcome back to our channel my name is woven if you are new to this channel and if you are returning thank you very much for tuning in and joining us today on this financial wellness journey i need to catch my breath now guys as the video suggests today we are talking about saving and investing i i get excited by the concept of saving and investing so today that's what we're going to be talking about we're going to be looking at how to save and we're going to be looking at how much and why you and i should be saving guys i hope we are all saving when we are able now we're going to be looking at specifically where your money should be going in terms of saving and investing how much of it you should be saving and investing and possibly some areas where you can save right now guys remember this is not financial advice you are still going to be the custodian and the decision lies with you as the way to invest your money but you can also contact a registered qualified financial advisor to help you walk the journey with you now just thinking and reflecting right i i really wish we were taught basic money concepts in primary school high school maybe just a bit of you know in varsity as well the basics of budgeting saving investing debt you know just basic money concepts and how to apply this and that is why today i'm slouching today i want to thank momentum investments for joining and partnering with me on this video and for their commitment really to advancing financial literacy in namibia it's important and it goes a long way so you're probably wondering who's momentum investments right so they are an investment manager expertise in asset management and they basically provide investments for individuals businesses retirement funds and they allow you to invest with confidence and one of the ways that they do this is through their unit trust offering you know unit unit trust offerings right you might have heard some of you are probably in unit trust funds or you might have heard the term floating around as to what is a unit trust some of you are in it you don't really know how it works but you know it works let me simplify it for you and really i'm simplifying it again with a background that some of these basic money concepts were not taught in school so i'm going to do that here so we are going to to do heavy weight in terms of finance stocks but we're also going to we are cognizant i love that word of the fact that some of us are really just starting this financial wellness journey and we need our hands to be held with the concepts how it works and that's what i'm going to do on this channel now what is a unit trust simply put a unit trust pulls our funds our individual funds your 1000 my 1000 a couple of us and they then buy shares equity bonds um they invest in cash banks that can be locally or abroad you know offshore and maybe just to bring it back home when when mtc listed you would have heard people want to buy mtg huh? mtc mtc shares and some of us just didn't have enough money now what a unit trust does is because we don't have enough money maybe i just have a 500 what they then do is bring everybody's 500 together when you invest in a unit trust fund they are then able to buy shares in mtc o and l in namibia oryx is also listed you know and south africa you can buy pick and pay shop right uh, around the world apple um anglo ashante that is what a unit trust fund does they are they enable one to actually have access to these investments to these shares to these bonds that if you were alone with your 500 you wouldn't be able to access that i hope that simplifies it that is what a unit trust fund is now what are some of the advantages and and why is the dog barking at this hour okay now you guys please bear with me ne? i live in a in a neighborhood i wish maybe i lived like on an estate where it's very quiet but i don't so what are some of the benefits of of being in a unit trust investing in a unit trust now number one is the affordability like i said it pulls funds together now you would have heard some of the unit trust funds in the market either have very high requirements like you know fifty thousand is a minimum to start fifty thousand seventy five thousand a hundred thousand is a minimum um to start but now what momentum did is they said 
let's be inclusive the unit trust funds then they said you require or you need at least 200 dollars per month to access the momentum unit trust fund so per month if you want recurring it's 200 dollars or you have a minimum of 10,000 if you do not want to be doing it on a monthly basis that's the affordability i'm talking about you no longer need these huge amounts to then be part of a unit trust number two you know you have easy access to your funds right there's that flexibility it's not like a, a 30 day savings account where you have to go through hoops and explain why you need your own money no a unit trust fund like a, a money market or you know sometimes it's 24 hours you have your funds that's another advantage without having to explain to somebody and going through hopes that's another um advantage another advantage of having a unit trust fund right is is, is the safety of a unit trust fund because it's heavily regulated NAMFISA. You guys would have heard of NAMFISA. So unit trust funds are regulated by NAMFISA or a regulator within your jurisdiction in your country and they require disclosure, they require reporting. So in terms of, you know, fraud and embezzlement, your unit trust is really minimum. Like in terms of exposure to fraud and embezzlement, it's like very low on, 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 on your radar. And you can invest with confidence and a peace of mind in a unit trust basically. Now, now when, when saving guys you you need to set a goal right you need to set goals you need to be clear of what you're saving towards and we'll get to that and when you receive your check your income monthly weekly however you receive it you need to first be clear of how much do i have what do i want to save for now once you have a clear picture of that there are two things i want to if you don't remember anything else from this video two key takeaways number one when you receive your money thumb of rule is pay yourself first before you buy electricity before you pay your rent it's pay yourself first and how do you pay yourself first is through saving and investing that's the number one um key takeaway number two and that's why you would also see in my budget that i shared in the previous video saving and investing is actually the first line even if it's a 20 percent is because you need to pay yourself first number two on a monthly or weekly basis or the frequency at which you receive your 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 earnings you need to save at least 10 percent of your money so number one pay yourself first number two save 10 percent of your money so if you're you earn eight thousand every month then you need to save at least 800 every month if you earn twenty thousand every month then you need to save at least two thousand every month so those are the two please note them down when your salary comes in read remember them please please do that so now you have a clear picture of how much i want to save right but you also have your goals now the one first thing that you should save for is an emergency fund guys if you follow me on instagram can't stress this enough you need an emergency fund a fund or money that's reserved just for financial emergencies right in the event what are financial emergencies um, say for instance you were laid off retrenchment right um they say a roof leaking in your house you know something needs to be fixed a water pipe burst you know auto repairs medical bills a sudden death disability those are all emergencies and you ought to have a fund or you ought to have funds set aside this is how you avoid debt uh you know going to cash loans you go uh, family bank this is how you avoid that by having an emergency fund now how much should you save in an emergency fund three to six months is a thumb of rule so what should my emergency fund consist of it three to six months of your monthly expenses right so what are your monthly expenses your rent your car transport um if you have a, a loan your your loan amount you know your cell phone wi-fi is a basic human need you know those are your monthly expenses so you should have at least three to six months of that in your emergency fund that's number one of paying yourself first number two you need to save for retirement if it's one thing i wish i started with my very first paycheck and i didn't do that it's my retirement savings um account I, I didn't do that when i started um i was a temp 
but at that point i also didn't know that even when you are a temp even if you're not part of a company's pension fund there are vehicles in the market that you can save for your retirement from the very first salary and i want to encourage you guys please do that i i digress not even this is not digressing when you resign and you move employers guys please don't use your retirement funds don't don't use your retirement savings save them for retirement and and the reason why i say save them for retirement especially with us our, our life expectancy has increased and most of us retirement is 60 the age of 60. now imagine going for a month without your salary now that is retirement if you don't save for retirement yeah so the first one is save your for emergencies in, in in an account or a fund where you have access to easy access to if anything happens you can quickly get that money out guys a 30-day savings account hi no <laughs> You can use it for other things but not for emergency fund and then for your retirement fund there are so many products on the market like a retirement annuity if you are a temporary employee and you're not part of a pension fund and if you are part of pension fund guys make use of that if your employer does if there's a 50 50 contribution or they match what you contribute never leave money on the table so that's too where you should be saving and why you should be saving emergency fund retirement fund the number three is really our regular savings so your short-term savings your medium to long-term savings now what should be in this pool right your emergency fund and your savings accounts must not be mixed because your emergency fund i forgot to mention um christmas in ohawanga with natalia them is not an emergency your girl's trips to south africa is not an emergency your partner's birthday gift is not an emergency guys those are planned for events so really you only touch your emergency fund when an emergency happens i can't stress that enough and i think i will do another video where i can really just break down where you should be saving your emergency funds and generally just your savings let me know if that is something i should actually look at you can drop it in the description comment section below now the third thing i said is you save in your regular savings for a short uh, medium to long term um savings so that is another savings account or investment account what do you look at short term um you're looking at you know your birthday is coming up in three to six months you want to save you know a sinking fund um you want to buy new tires for your car you know you want to take your mom shopping mother's day was just uh, now you want to buy a gift for your mom maybe a washing machine something you know and medium term really is medium to long term you're then looking at i want to start um you know i want to buy a property in two or three years time then you can start building that fund now to to have a big down payment on your house or even if just you want to you've had this bond for a while and you want to pay off a bigger chunk guys you know you can do that right in in addition to your monthly installments to your mortgage you can top up or you want to buy a car in a year or two years time you can start saving for that 10 percent an anniversary celebration and when you start talking about long-term really long-term savings long-term long-term investments is your, your children's school fees you know high school university that's what you're looking at maybe you want to buy a second property in five to ten years then you already start planning so that by the time you get there you are not like mm. Now this house is costing me three million, but I only qualify for two point five. You could have possibly, you know, saved the five hundred thousand if you can and if you are disciplined. You know, if you employ some of these um, tactics or some of these principles that we're sharing on this video. So yeah, essentially that is really why you should be saving for emergencies, rainy days, guys, life has this inevitable ability to throw curveballs at us. Emergencies welcome, and you will need those funds. So please, save for that. Save for retirement. Let me know if I can do more videos on retirement, uh, various vehicles you can look at, even as a business. You know, as a business entity, even if it's just two of you or three of you, do know that you there are some, some um, even Momentum offers, um, 
for smaller businesses they, they offer pension fund products where you have a bit of you know pension savings and you have a bit of uh, maybe risk and life cover disability things like that let me know if those are things that you want me to get into detail with and yeah so key takeaways pay yourself first number two at least 10 percent of your income number three unit trust you don't have to go through hoops and you don't need big amounts momentum is unit trust funds where you start with a minimum of 200 dollars namibian dollars or rents per month and number three say for emergency or oh, that's number four say for emergency say for retirement and then you have your short medium long-term savings i hope you guys enjoy this video and yeah let me know in the description in the comment section if uh, you want me to elaborate on emergency savings and where specifically you should park your money happy saving and investing guys i'll talk to you again